Hello there, you beautiful people, and welcome back to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever for another Stepstool Atticast. This is going to be the second one of this week, I hope you're excited, and we are going to be looking at two very low-rated players playing on the map Williamson's Bridge. There's almost no reclaim, just 3,000 scattered about in very small pockets. So let's go ahead and check in on our players and see who they are. We're going to be starting off with the Red Seraphim by the name of Soul Gamer. 31BR going first land. Then we can go ahead and go check on our blue player who this time is a UEF and his name is Centurion X. He is going first land as well. So with that out of the way we are going to speed up the early game because I've watched through this replay half-heartedly and uh, you know I just kind of wanted to get through the boring part because these players uh may take a little while to decide to start punching each other in the face, but when they do, it's going to be spicy. So, if you are so inclined and do like my content, please consider subscribing. We're almost to 700 subscribers. Such a big milestone indeed. And if you want to help me with the algorithm, like and comment. We do have a bit of an engagement now finally starting here in the middle at the 2 minute and 43 second mark. We have the Seraphim Com of Soul Gamer 31 br coming in to fight Centurion who is trying to build a wall and... He, he's gonna complete the wall from the looks of it. Centurion gonna get his wall off that he wanted so badly. And Soul Gamer gonna kill off a mass extractor and walk away after that one. He's going for a double wall. I really hope he gave a move order. Otherwise, he might trap his comm inside this wall, which would be kind of unfortunate for him. Gonna get up that mass extractor. On the flanks, we have more walls being built. Centurion very scared of the outside world and wants to keep it out. Uh, he, he likes the out part of outside world, and that's what he's intending to do. And now he has his striker coming out to kill off these three Selin that were trying to kill off engineers. The engineers are going to complete that wall on this flank. Are we going to get the trifecta of walls? Are we going to turn it into a triple wall map? No, he's opting for point defense on this side. We, of course, have our obligatory UEF turtle going in in this match and we have more Selins coming out from Soul Gamer. He's a fan of them but I think they are currently the worst lab scout in the game. Uh, scout wise I don't think they're as fast as some of the other scouts and lab wise they just do not do the same amount of damage. So these Selins gonna be running up and gonna be taken out by a line of tanks and a PD not gonna be giving him anything but information that there are indeed enemies over on that flank but this strategy from Centurion is a very interesting one because fun fact whenever you cut off half of the map from you 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 can't get stuff on that half of the map these this expansion going to be super easy for Soul Gamer to pick up unless he starts getting into the air game very relatively soon he's gonna just kind of be behind and now that these players are into their eco phase, let's go ahead and speed it up once more, see exactly what they plan to do to deal with their opponents. And we don't have any upgrades. Very interesting. We do have a good luck for have fun and a U2 out of these players. There is a we have Soul Gamer over here building more and more factories. I don't know if he can afford it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he needs power, not factories. He needs to start building more pigeons. And even then, he probably cannot afford all of these factories he is building. He needs to be very cognizant of how much mass he is inco income he is taking and how much he is going to be expending. These walls, of course, being an ally to the blue tank, this one striker might be able to kill off all four thumbs if these walls can hold up long enough, and I think they will. So this one striker, of course, your units can fire through your own buildings, as you can see, but your opponents cannot. So this striker going to be using that to his advantage. It's like a discount point defense over on this flank. We have more tanks and artillery coming over, but that one striker, our hero, is going to end up already killing off that slend. About to kill off another tank. He's going to kill off... Oh, he doesn't quite get it. He does not quite get it. 40 health on that tank. Could have been a 6 kill tank. He is at 1 veteran. So he's going to be re re regenning health. He hasn't lost any yet. But that tank going to be very, very important to this game. It does seem Centurion's doing a little bit better on expanding. He's gotten the shoulder drone to help with his expansion. He's gotten both soldier shoulder drones. He does not believe in having civilian casualties. And I don't even know if he's had a casualty yet this game. He is technically playing a perfect game after killing Selin and thumbs without taking any losses 
This man is a madman. He Oh, he lost a mass extractor in the middle, and he's about to lose another one to the Thom that has more motivation than all of his buddies. And that Thom's going to kill off that. Get up a little bit of veterancy experience. Now the walls are under siege. Thom's not best known for killing structures, and walls quite tanky with their 3,000 hit points each. But these tanks are going to start killing off all, all of these walls very slowly. This delaying tactic out from Centurion seems to be benefiting him as he's on 25 mass a second versus 19. It looks like he might be having trouble spending all of his mass, but his strategy is ironclad just like a battleship. He will not take any damage. And Soul Gamer, now reclaiming the wall fragments that had died. Needs to keep on pushing forward and killing off more walls if he wants to attack through this middle flank. Is reclaiming even more walls. He's figured out the code. He's figured out how to remove his opponent's structures. And he's doing it. More mass extractors dying for Centurion over here on the eastern side. And we have ourselves a game to behold. While Soul Gamer continues to try and break this wall that has been built up by Centurion. We're going to have to keep an eye on how these players progress, how they tech up. We have T2 mechs out from Centurion, so he's going to be having a lot of mass. Reclaim-wise, both of these players about the same, 900 to 1,000, or 889 to 1,000. Only about 100 reclaim difference, which isn't very much. It's only a couple tanks, and uh, these players are going to need to continue to reclaim if they want to get more done in this game. I have a feeling with the low economy that Williamson's Bridge offers, it's going to be either whoever techs up mexes or whoever gets a bunch of reclaim first. Soul Gamer reclaiming with the comm as his units push forward. Are there enough units here for Centurion to stop this aggression from winning? With no micro, the Zooies are getting exponential value against the units fielded by Centurion. And the units for Centurion have slowly evaporated. T2 now on the way for Centurion. A bold move out of the UEF turtle player. Going to be able to get up some triads and force Soul Gamer to come up with a solution for this blasphemous increase in technological level of his opponent. We are in the 40k universe now where creating new things means you're a heretic. Now Soul Gamer 31 BR going to continue to fight his way through everything. Gonna be laying the aggression onto his opponent. Now I do know for a fact that Soul Gamer is a part of my Discord and Twitch community, and he may have heard the wise words of more shit counters yet less shit. And currently he is very much so living it. He has a lot of factories that he can't afford, but damn if he has a lot of damn he really can't afford these factories. Oh uh, man, either way, still fielding a decent amount of units and now is about to be falling a little bit lower as these triads start to cause issues. Zooey on the high ground going to be using that to try and siege up this low ground area. We have still just one T2 max. Another T2 max on the way for Soul Gamer, his first of the, no, his second of the game. Going to try and tech up as quickly as possible to get more economy, therefore you get more units, and then that's just more stuff to kill your opponent with. But these triads offering a unique challenge to Soul Gamer, who is convinced that his comm is immortal. Gonna be taking triad fire right into the noggin, not gonna give a who's what's it or hoot nanny about that triad fire until it starts getting a little bit too much, and now he's gonna start running away. Does he get away? I think he does, he's about to be out of range. And he is safe now, just needs to walk that comm right on back and stay in a solid position. We have a PD creep now on the way for Centurion. This is a very expensive strategy. He really can't afford it, but he is going to throw his... It's, it's a common theme at these lower levels of players. Not quite sure what they can and cannot afford. Soul Gamer finally e stabilizing on his eco, stabilizing and getting to the point where he can afford all of the factories he's so generously built. But now he's going to attack two factories which he won't be able to afford oh the plays the plays out of these low economy high uh life plays they're, they're they're very high on life or something else who knows and we have thumbs versus strikers and strikers versus thumbs nobody quite at the level where they've realized that things like you know mobile missile launchers exist 
Actually, for Centurion, he just needs to realize that something other than a structure exists. Oh my word, more triads to be built. He's gonna build one over here on the high ground just to give Overwatch to his only flank that doesn't have a wall or only flank that never had a wall. His uh, his weak side, he's, he's playing it like Napoleon just a little bit differently. Napoleon chose the left flank to be weak. Now we do have Centurion choosing the right side to be weak. Centurion now pushing forward on the right side. Does he have enough to just roll through this small garrison out from Soul, Ga Ga from Soul Gamer? And he does seem to have enough there to protect or to, to ward off the attack, but not to thwart it entirely. And the units from Centurion, after seeing the enemy, realize that war is very, very scary and run away, despite having superior numbers in that engagement. We now have a trifecta of triad on the front line, and then we have a back line of about five triads. So that's going to be a uh, is going to be a very difficult place to to attack into. Soul Gamer slowly dying to triad fire yet again, not quite realizing how close he is to dying. Oh my word! Soul Gamer down to 1500 HP, 1100, 700, 64. Oh, three, 100 HP, and he walks out of the range of the Triads with a sneeze worth of health left. A particularly strong wind could knock that ACU right off its legs and into a nuclear explosion. But luckily, these two bombers do not have the wherewithal to go bomb that ACU. Centurion, so close to victory, yet so, so far away. He's, he's maybe realizing his, the flaw in his strategy, that flaw being that triads cannot chase units. It's a very unfortunate flaw. Over on the western side, the Helm's Deep wall of this flank has been eroded away. The firebomb carried by the Orakai has managed to break a hole in this stalwart defense. And now we're going to have to see Centurion react and send his archers and his his noble swordsman to go fight. Legolas is gonna have to do some great sick shots and take like 87 takes to surf a shield down some stairs. But in the end, it ends just like the movie. The invaders are thwarted. <gasps> Not quite by Gandalf this time. This time it was, it was Frodo. Fro Frodo came all the way back from almost being in Mordor to, uh, to assist. Sam was still in Mordor. Sam got lost. He was, he was, yeah, he was figuring it out. And as we talk about Lord of the Rings, we do have ourselves Scorcher bombers dropping bombs all over Max Mass Extractors. T1 mobile anti-air coming out, but these Mass Extractors may still be forfeit as it does require Micro to chase down bombers with mobile anti-air. And these bombers are being quite effective. At 16 minutes, you would never think that T1 bombers would be getting serious harassment damage off, but they are bombing his own units in a way. But good thing friendly fire isn't really a thing in this uh, universe. The, that fire only hurts bad things. That's how fire works. It doesn't hurt our things. It hurts the bad things. Bomber coming in to try and kill off a point defense built up by Soul Gamer. And Soul Gamer is starting to be pushed back on multiple fronts. This air... This air technology that he has not encountered before is really, really throwing him for a loop. He does not quite understand that units can fly and will fly, and they will be very upset with you whenever they get into range with their nasty fire and shrapnel. Uh, all right, we're 16 minutes in. Let's check on the economies of the player. Centurion at 25 CS, which is a astounding or CS. Oh my god, I've been playing too much League of Legends. 25 mass a second versus the 24 mass a second of Soul Gamer. Soul Gamer, it's significantly behind the curve. I do not know if this is an economic position from which he could recover. We will have to stay tuned to find out. Centurion is going to be taking away some of the power of Soul Gamer, but Soul Gamer has more than enough power. He's spending a lot of mass right now, which is something he really cannot afford to do. He needs more units. He's finally getting up an air factory. It's going to be his uh, potential saving grace as these Scorcher fire bombers are still just laying waste all over the map. We have few engagements going on. Centurion getting aggressive. We don't normally see this out of a UEF turtle player. 
but whenever it happens, it is indeed a very beautiful sight to behold. But Ilshavas on the eastern flank have reigned true. They have come in and eviscerated the force that was here from Centurion that was making so much progress. And now they are going to threaten the base of Centurion. Centurion not going to be able to deal with these Ilshavas without getting his comm involved or getting some air support or just overwhelming numbers. Those are his three options. Or he could just let the Ilshavas go ahead and destroy everything on this eastern flank and build a wall. He does like walls and he has built a few. In the middle we have more point defense being built by Soul Gamer. Soul Gamer's fatal flaw at the moment is being unable to afford anything. He's producing 23 mass a second, but he's trying to spend 121, which is kind of like going to the bank and saying, hey, I make $6 a month. Give me a loan for a million. It, that, that, that's about the level of, of mass stall he's at at the moment. But he is trying to fix it by throwing a lot of mass into T2 mexes. The question is, did he pause anything for this? No, he did not. He's just going to let it brutally take its time. He's even building this point defense, which he desperately cannot afford while trying to get that T2 upgrade. And that T2 upgrade is not going to help him very much because it goes... It, it's going to give him a, like nine more mass a second, which is not very much. But he's at... He's at 27 mass a second. He is losing mass extractors almost as slowly as he is upgrading them. And that's another mass extractor down. And now we can look at it. There's four mass extractors for Soul Gamer. Admittedly, three of them are Tech 2. But his economy is in shambles. He is on the ropes 25 mass a second versus a blisteringly high eco of 30 mass a second for Centurion X. This is a very, very interesting game. We're talking about economics over here on the northern side of the map. We have Venezuela. Money is nothing anymore. And uh, over here for Centurion, we have, well, Venezuela, but slightly less fucked as he... Uh, He's building the mass storage around all of his mexes. With only having three T2 mexes, you might think, is mass storage worth the investment? And the answer would most definitely be no. But he is a man of means, and he will have only the best mass extractors around. Both of these players getting mass storage when they just shouldn't. This is not the time to get mass storage. You're, you're going from, like... 6 mass a second to 9 mass a second, it's not that big of a deal. You would rather see more T2 mexes. Um, mass, mass storage costs, what, 1 mass storage costs how much? 200 mass, and upgrading a mex costs 900, so those 4 mass storages could have been a T2 mex, which instead of giving you 3 mass a second, would have given you 5. See, doing math is not all that hard. Or actually, it'd given you, it would have still given you three, but... Yeah, I just think the T2 Max is more worth it. But Centurion's going to outdo us all by going for the T1... Oh, uh, he was going to get T T1 uh, mass storage, but he decided against it, did decide he had better things to do. Now that we are about 18 minutes in, I would like to remind, or I would like, not like to remind you, but I would like to say, uh, I apologize, uh, for any background noise. My AC went out and I am not going to play, I'm not going to cast while it's like 100 degrees in my room. There's a fan. I've pointed it away from the microphone, so hopefully it's not too horrible. Maybe you don't even hear it. Maybe I've edited it out, but you know, if you do hear it, just know that that's my ASMR for the week. We have a lot of T1 bombers uh, forming up a formation over here in the back of Centurion's base, which is dangerous as there's really only static defenses to deal with this. So if an attack does come in, these T1 bombers will be exceptionally effective in defending against it. Soul Gamer now investing in a very expensive piece of technology. It is a shield generator. He is investing all of this in all of these mass extra or all of these PD, all of, all of this defense in an area that Centurion hasn't sent a single unit to. Mind you, he has not crossed the former wall of Centurion. He has not crossed that line with a single unit since it was built. All right, 
What's 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 on the menu now, Soul Gamer? Soul Gamer, of course, investing also into radar technology, allowing him to see all of these great gray blobs. I'd like to see one scout fly over so you could just see everything, but that's not going to happen. And Centurion, he has himself a radar, but it's only T1, so he does not quite see everything, but he does have scouting thanks to those Scorcher bombers as a vague idea of what's going on. We still don't see a T2 factory being built by Centurion. He has decided that the comm is the only thing that's worth getting technology on. The, the commander is, of course, the most important unit in the game, and he is indeed a dictator. He is going to leave all of his factories and all of his units impoverished. No Tech 2 units for you, but we will have triads, and we will have... What's the name of the flak for the for the UEF? What What is... What, what's... One second. We will have air cleaners and we'll have tsunamis if there's any water to be found and buzz kills and sd pulses and clank hammers and maybe even aloha so that way i can say hello to you and also fuck you at the same time <laughs> surprisingly a tactical missile launcher would be brutal like completely brutal for either side if either of them decided I'm gonna build a tactical missile launcher with my 50, wow, 49 mass a second, or my 36 mass a second. Yeah, it would be enough to just destroy the entire economy of the other player. Soul Gamer, still quite far behind economically, but he is still continuing to push out and try and gain more territory, whereas Centurion has decided to rebuild his wall on this western flank, and the eastern flank is far too scary to actually take and defend. That's crazy talk. And uh, as we settle in for another few minutes of these players deciding what they will do to attack each other. Oh wait, no, we have something going on. We have something very interesting going on. We have a T2 artillery piece now out from Soul Gamer. He is gonna be going for the strategy of standoff tactics and on Williamson Bridge it's very cheap to go for standoff tactics tactics this 5x5 five five map of course offering an abundance of range to the T2 artillery pieces and we have pulses now being built up by Centurion a very good call as it will help protect his economy let's go ahead and check on the range of this he can hit pretty much everything on the front line and that is all that super duper matters for Soul Gamer. He's going to be able to kill off all of these point defense. And maybe even more if he is lucky. We have triads now going up on this eastern flank. Four of them queued up. It's going to be a very defendable location. But you have to ask yourself at, one po at what point do these triads, triads become obsolete? At what point can my opponent just walk up and say, I don't care? And that opponent, that, uh, his opponent is reaching towards the heavens, is reaching towards that point in the game. He's finally got his economy to a point where he can maybe sort of, kind of, sometimes pay for things. Which is much more than what he was at before. Building Ilshavas out of two factories, which is ambitious. Building another T2 P gen, does he need it? Yes, he does. So kudos on him for, for going for it. Uh, this artillery piece definitely not helping him. You can see that his economy gets a lot worse every time it, it needs to recharge to fire. 123 mass a sec or power a second is not insignificant. And you can see it's about to fire. Come on, fire. It just fired, and we're da back down to negative on our power economy. And a massive Scorcher bombing onto the comm of Soul Gamer. The Scorchers are going to be dead after one pass, but 5,000 HP left, doing almost 10,000 damage to that comm. That is a scary sight to behold, but that was a investment over a huge period of time. We now have mobile missile launchers being built up by Centurion. He's gone to Tech 2. He can afford Tech 2. So yeah, he can afford Tech 2. And he is going to continue to be ecoing up and building himself a army to rival the army of his opponent. But the thing is, there's a lot of Ilshavas and he's focusing mainly on the production of Flapjacks. And Flapjacks do not do well against Ilshavas because Ilshavas move. Ilshavas over here in the... Uh, 
northeastern corner doing their thing. We're going to go ahead and speed things up again. The artillery pieces not seemingly getting any substantial damage done. Has killed off a few triads, but nothing of great importance has gone down due to this artillery piece existing. Are we going to have more than one built? No, it does not look like it. On the northeastern flank, we have multiple... Oh, wow. Both of these players turtling quite hard. We have point defense now built up by Soul Gamer on the northern flank. And that's going to be stopping any aggression out from Centurion. And Soul Gamer doing a risky move, getting a lot of Tech 2 Mass Extractors very far forward and has now leapfrogged his opponent. He is getting up to the level where you could maybe call him a second world country instead of a third one as he's at 60 mass a second versus 52 of Centurion. Centurion, this lack of map control is biting him in the rear, but he is still fighting. He is still trying to make things happen. Mongeese now being produced, the bane of low-level UEF players all over the world, not quite understanding that you you have to pay attention to them for them to do well. A large force for Soul Gamer now building up. He may have enough to just kind of push in and tell Centurion that he has lost the game, but he's not going to play it too risky now. He needs to make sure that he is on a good economic footing and can afford to replace the army like seven times before uh, before committing to anything too hastily. These Both of these players are very patient with their, uh, with their moves, very much so calculating. They're sitting over here with their chalkboards and writing down the number of units that they see and the number of units they have and trying to decide exactly how far they can take it. These point defense over on this northeastern side now under assault by centurion but was it worth it at what cost did it take to kill off those two point defense he's now going to lose all of his t1 army over here to the ilshavas ilshavas pushing down the middle that was the the spark that ignited the gas fire underneath soul gamer and now soul gamer is going to be attacking with all of his might there are janus now on the field is it enough to stop this onslaught out from soul gamer who has any idea but the fight continues over here in the middle units are burning shields are falling and triads are firing on the northern flank, there are triads to try and help with the Yoshevas. The Yoshevas over there starting to get thinned out. A large engagement still happening over here for the defense of Centurion, the attack of Soul Gamer. Soul Gamer's attack seemingly petering out, but he's managed to get in. He's managed to clear out a lot of the defenses. His next attack may be able to get a little bit more done. Janus going to come in, drop some firebombs on the remaining Yoshevas, and that's going to be the end of this attack and now these players are assumedly going to go back to ecoing so we're going to go back up to times 10 speed and we're going to see what they plan to do a second artillery piece has come online for soul gamer janus now firebombing those t2 mexes that were invested in by soul gamer he's about to be back to venezuela levels of economy and centurion his economy relatively unfazed as it's all in his main base it's hard to destroy something if that is the way to win the game. And over here, more mass extractors will be falling. Like London Bridge, they're going down. And unfortunately, this is going to leave Soul Gamer impoverished. Tech 3 factory on the way for Soul Gamer. He has a force building up yet again. He's building his forces slightly faster than Centurion, who I believe is investing a lot into structures right now. Yes, he is indeed. So he is going to be a bit behind in the rebuilding of his army, but he will have more structures, and we'll have to see exactly how that pans out for him. We have a forward base now being built up by Soul Gamer, but yet again, the bane of his existence, the air units, are causing him trouble. More Janus dropping firebombs down onto these point defense. These point defense are going to go down relatively quickly. And Janus are just constantly being pumped out of this factory as fast as Soul Gamer can afford to build them. Soul Gamer built a buzzkill, thinking it might protect him against the artillery shells flying. Unfortunately, unlike the real close-in weapon systems of today, uh, not quite able to shoot down artillery shells, but... Wait, the real ones can, can't they? They can shoot down damn near anything. 
over here in the middle, Soul Gamer, now making his way forward. His calm under some threat, but not quite enough to be super scary. Ilsheva coming up to try and protect his lord, his his amazing, amazing leader, valiant leader, heroic leader. The Ilsheva may die for its trans transgressions against the UEF, but no, in fact, does not. And Soul Gamer continues to reclaim. Let's look at the reclaim now. We have 5,000 for Soul Gamer and six and a, it's almost 7,000 for Centurion. Centurion doing well on the reclaim game. If only he could find out that the map is not scary. In fact, he needs to take the map in order to win. We're going to go ahead and speed up to five, plus five sim speed. See how these players continue to fight it out. We have Ilshava's now going to be assaulting over on the northeastern side. Yet again, Ilshava's coming in to deal damage to the opposing structures. Unfortunately, these structures shoot back and they're doing quite a little bit as Jane has come in to firebomb this. At this point, there may be a gent enough Janus start. The, the Janus buildup is getting scary. There might be some and not too very long from now. There might be enough to go for another one of those snipe attempts if Soul Gamer does decide to step out from underneath the safety of that shield. But Centurion seems to be crumbling. This northeastern flank has now been quite well and good destroyed. It's not looking good. The area with the wall down here is still relatively safe. We have clink hammers now being built in an attempt to stop the artillery fire incoming from Soul Gamer. Is it going to be enough and is it going to be in time? We have a second shield up. We have stealth generators and we have more clink hammers on the way. He's going to go for three clink hammers, which is maybe a counter for the two artillery of Soul Gamer. But is it going to be enough? Is he too far behind to make this happen? As we look at the economies, once again, he's at 41 mass a second versus the 85 of Soul Gamer. Soul Gamer grabbing the mass income advantage and going to use it as a cudgel to beat Centurion six feet underground. We now have Soul Gamer continuing to push forward with his Ilshiva force on the northeastern side. He's getting decent inroads in towards the base of Centurion. Ilshavas continuing to push forward, killing triads before they can be built. These Ilshavas now officially in the back line is going to start dealing economic damage. Is this enough? Is this what Soul Gamer needs to take the advantage to win the game? He's at tech 3 on his factory, so even behind this, he has a better economy and better technology. Soul Gamer slowly eroding his way towards a victory, but as we know, this is steps to a ladder. And victory can be snatched away, as you can, of course, take defeat and snatch it from the jaws of victory. I don't know why I, 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 that, I, I fucked up that, but I kept going with it. <laughs> Somebody fire the intern. They're not giving me a good enough script. <laughs> oh, Tech 3 engineers building Tech 3 shields for some reason. Instead of just upgrading the Tech 2 shield you have, it's cheaper. But no, no, that's too complicated. The clink hammer battery is almost fully online with three full clink hammers. May be able to return fire upon the blasphemous Seraphim assaulting him. The Yoshvas get in. They kill off a T2 power and a T2 mechs. The question is, will those mechs, that mechs even be replaced? And I do not know the answer to that. We have a T3 shield now on the way for Soul Gamer. At this point, it seems like he may just be able to build some Othams and end the game, but he's having power issues. His frontal base being destroyed by those Clink Hammers, not quite able to deal with the onslaught of these Clink Hammers, but with the mobile missile launchers coming in and giving that little bit more damage, and combined with the artillery pieces, it may just be enough to 
should be able to thwart the efforts of Centurion in this artillery war that's been waging for a nice little while. Another shield generator going to be built up as quickly as Centurion can muster it. That, 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 that was the most lucky shot Centurion could hope for without the shot completely missing. All it does is get rid of the stealth field generator which is not a vital piece of his defense at the moment. But over here on the northern side, we have more Elshivas coming in. This mass extractor has been replaced, the power generator soon to follow. And Triads are valiantly defending this position. But Centurion really boxed into a corner. Let's see if he is scarier when thrown into a corner than he is whenever he is all over the map. Is he... Uh, Dangerous when cornered, I guess is how I should word that. We have Othams now building up. I think that Soul Gamer has enough to end it. He just needs to get the courage to push forward. We're going to slow down really quick as a few units are starting to move forward. And we're going to see how this assault goes. We're going to see if there is indeed a way for Centurion to make this work. The aggressive onslaught of the Ilshiva an Otham army is pushing forward and is it going to be enough? Where is the comm? The comm is back here building Ravagers. The Ravagers would be very useful up here in the front but they won't be there in time as the Ilshiva onslaught continues forward with the aid of the Othams. This may be the end for our man in blue for Centurion. His health is falling and declining at a rate that is simply disgusting. And he control K's, admits defeat, and his his calm dies before the control K goes all the way through. Wow. And uh, GG well played. As the screen is turned white from the death of the blue man, I will leave you with this eyesore. No, I won't. I'll leave you with this. Thank you all for watching. You all have been beautiful. If you liked it, consider liking the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you to my patrons, Timothy Calderwood, Sergeant Syphilis, Nogthar, Idol Betazoid, Mutant Gene Pool, and Icy Nightmare. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye